There is a legend that the second album is the most difficult. However, in Prince's case, I think Around the World in a Day can make a claim to be one of the trickiest projects to release. Commercially, artistically, culturally, Prince was on top of the world. Purple Rain the movie was box office gold and hand in hand with Purple Rain the album had catapulted Prince and the revolution to the top of every sales chart there practically was. The Purple Rain live tour was nothing short of a juggernaut, an unstoppable, relentless force of nature, powerballing its way across America. But the persistent question must have played in the back of Printer's mind like a groove he just couldn't quite quieten. How in the world do you follow up this legendary, record-breaking album? What direction do you go? Prince had clearly given it some thought, as he commented that in some ways, Purple Rain scared me. It's my albatross, and I'll be hanging around my neck as long as I'm making music. However, Prince, being Prince, seemed determined on one point. The next album would be something different. It most definitely wouldn't be Purple Rain 2, despite how tempting that may have been to some artists. You know how easy it would have been to open around the world in the day, with a guitar solo that's on the end of Let's Go Crazy, Prince said? Just put it up in a different key. That would have shut everybody up who said the album wasn't half as powerful. I don't want to make an album like the earlier ones. Wouldn't it be cool to put your albums back to back and not get bored? This was something that Alan Leeds also confirmed when he said if there was a theme to Around the World in the Day, it was that this was the anti-Purple Rain record. Many have considered Around the World in the Day to be Prince's Beatles album, something he also denied. The influence wasn't the Beatles, he told Rolling Stone. They were great for what they did, but I don't know how that would hang today. Released in April 1985, just 10 months after Purple Rain, and marking the very first Prince release on his newly formed Paisley Park Records, sales, as could be expected, were not ever going to top Purple Rain, but they were building upon the long-time fan base Prince had garnered, particularly since 1999 had launched Prince into the mainstream consciousness. Here, I will make a bold claim, and one that many in the Prince community will disagree with. But I personally feel Around the World in the Day is in many ways a more coherent, consistent and thought-provoking album than the later Parade album. Each song on Around the World in the Day adds a texture, a colour, something new and interesting. Each song has a right to be there, and Prince's beliefs, philosophies and outward-looking stance to the world was arguably never greater. From socially conscious powerhouses such as Paisley Park and The Ladder, to hauntingly, almost soul-breaking emotional ballads such as Condition of the Heart, to monster jams like America, where the revolution could hold a groove for days upon days, to the trippy highlights of the title track and the future classic Raspberry Beret, Prince even found time to include politics, religion and touches of eccentricity that only Prince could in tracks such as Tambourine and Temptation. As the line in Pop Life goes, Everybody needs a thrill. We all got a space to fill. Everybody can't be on top. But life, it ain't real funky unless it's got that pop. Everybody was invited into Prince's inner sanctum. Everybody was able to visit Paisley Park. Because as Prince said, Paisley Park is in everybody's heart. It's not just something I have the keys to. 
I tried to say something about looking inside oneself to find perfection. Perfection is in everyone. Nobody's perfect, but they can be. We may never reach that, but it's better to strive than not. And in just 42 and a half minutes, prints in the revolution show what a glorious, trippy, psychedelic, emotionally charged, politically infused, longing, searching testament to Prince's journey this album truly is. Time to open your heart and your mind and board the train to experience this great album. Talk about a bold opening statement. Prince kicks off with a track that was initially written by another artist, the talented David Coleman, brother of Lisa Coleman. Prince had gifted David a couple of days of studio time at Sunset Sound for David's birthday and once Prince saw the result, it was clear that the fates had aligned. And not only did Prince want to put his own spin on the track, but make it the title track. Prince reworked the music and made lyrical changes. Prince's father, John L. Nelson, is also credited as a writer on the track, as he would also be on the ladder. An opening track is a statement of intent, often a theme for the album, certainly when it is a concept album. And here the title track does so much it's almost hard to keep an eye or an ear on all that is going on. You can tell from the first moment musically that this track is going to explore some new territories of Prince. On this album instruments included the cello, oud, finger cymbals, duboka, I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong, and tambourine. Prince awakens in the song with a yawning, spiralling scream as the delicate instruments float over a bass drum thump. Open your heart, open your mind, a train is leaving all day. A wonderful trip through our time and laughter is all you pay. Prince once again, as he would so often in his songs, sings about being lonely. Loneliness already knows you, there ain't no reason to stay. Come here and take my hand, I'll show you, I think I know a better way. Prince here is the Pied Piper of Paisley, gathering his multitude of followers and leading them to a new world, a new way of being. Prince talks about the purple ladder, a theme, a metaphor he will return to later. And in many ways, the opening track sets up the journey to this new place of joy and contentment that he explores in the next track, Paisley Park. Stylistically, it couldn't be much further from Purple Rain's opener, Let's Go Crazy. Gone are the rock guitars and the wailing solos, and instead Prince embraces a kaleidoscope of alternative and non-mainstream instrumentation and musical motifs. The track explodes as Prince exclaims, Papa, I think I want to dance. And the track builds in a way that just like can't stop this feeling I got also does. The frustration for me is that the track is just 3 minutes 25 seconds long and it actually fades out just as it starts to fully reach its stride. A few more minutes would have been wonderfully welcome. But Prince had so much to pack in on this album and we are on to the next track, Paisley Park. Paisley Park is in your... Before it was known as a building, and before it was known as a record label, Paisley Park was much, much more. It was a state of mind, a manifesto laid out by Prince. Like Uptown before it, Paisley Park was an idea, a place where everyone from every background, no matter what race, colour or creed, could come together as one. A peaceful, harmonious and beautiful place in your heart and mind. Prince put this idea, like Uptown before it, into song, and Paisley Park took its place as the second track on the Around the World in a Day album. This beautifully whimsical song sets out the manifesto from the opening verse as Prince sings. There is a park that is known for the face it attracts. Colourful people whose hair on one side is swept back. Smile on their faces, it speaks of profound inner peace. Ask where they're going, they'll tell you nowhere. They've taken a lifetime lease on Paisley Park. The themes and subjects that Prince is touching on here are like so many of his songs still so right on time. 21st century life has seen a massive change in the way we now view and deal with people's mental health with many forms of help from yoga to meditation, gardening to counselling to spiritual gurus. There are so many ways now to help people who are struggling mentally without feeling ashamed or stigmatised. Inner peace is a massive achievement for anyone. And here, Prince was providing a way for his fans to help attain it, if they so wanted to. Paisley Park is in your heart. 
It doesn't matter if you never get to visit the building in Minneapolis. Paisley Park was never about bricks and mortar. It's a place for anyone, anytime, anywhere. Any time you're in that private world, just you and Prince's music, you can reach this happy place. It's what he gave us, his legacy of music. Talking of music, the instrumentation here on Paisley Park is just perfect for this song. From violins to finger cymbals, it's another nod to flower power and the psychedelic music of the 1960s, the main inspiration for much of the music on this album. The whole feel of the track is dreamlike and almost childlike in nature, with the chorus reciting like a nursery rhyme. The track is driven along by the drums and keyboards, with some interesting guitar noodling and riffs in the background, and at around the 2 minutes 30 mark, the guitar really starts to sound like the ending part from Private Joy from the Controversy album, as Prince adds some distortion effects. The track is mainly a solo effort by Prince, although Wendy and Lisa provide backing vocals and Navi Novog the violin. As well as the uplifting message, Prince also manages to put in some observations, which show a huge maturity in writing for someone of his age at that time. See the man cry as the city condemns where he lives. Memories die, but taxes he'll still have to give. Whoever said that elephants were stronger than mules? Come to the park and play with us. There aren't any rules in Paisley Park. Paisley Park is one of Prince's best and most uplifting and positive tracks. With its whimsical and psychedelic style, it sits perfectly next to the album's opening track and gets your mood and spirit up just before you're taken with a condition of the heart. Thinking about you driving me crazy oh, oh. Any discussion of Prince's most stunning, open-hearted, vulnerable, personal and hauntingly beautiful ballads must include Condition of the Heart very near the top. It is beyond stunning. It is brave, wounding and intoxicating. Intensely personal, Prince sings of being a lonely musician and how acting on a whim only leads to a condition of the heart. In a wonderfully poetic lyric, he details his love for Susanna Melvoin, sister of revolution guitarist Wendy Melvoin. There was a woman from the ghetto who made funny faces just like Clara Bow. How was I to know that she would wear the same cologne as you and giggle the same giggle that you do whenever I would act a fool, the fool with a condition of the heart. It was often said that Wendy made faces just like Clara Bow, the famous silent film actress of the 1920s, and for Prince to find another, i.e. Susanna, that would have her mannerisms and look led to a great love in his life. On this track, Prince simply leaves it all out on the field. His soul is bared. Musically, the melancholic, slowly building, mesmerising introduction is given full breathing space to develop and play out with a wide array of delicate musical runs, motifs and transcendental piano. Indeed, Prince doesn't even start singing until just before three minutes into this nearly seven minute song, by which time we've had crashes and crescendos, waves of sound rising and falling, a full symphony of sound. Prince's ability for a profound phrase was never better captured than the lines Thinking about you driving me crazy. My friends all say it's just a phase. Every single day is a yellow day and blinded by the daisies in your yard. The sonically soaring oh oh refrains as Prince begins some of the lines are just pure emotional abandon. This is great art and I stand by that completely. It still floors me. After all these years, put it on now, right now. It will tap into your heart in a way few pieces of music can ever do. It's sublime. She wore a raspberry parade, the, kind of... the fourth track on this album has to be one of Prince's most well-known and iconic tracks of all time. A huge fan favourite and a staple at almost every Prince tour since it was first released. It is, of course, the gloriously infectious Raspberry Beret. If you could capture the secret to writing pop perfection in a bottle, then the result would be Raspberry Beret. Prince just had that knack to be able to write incredible catchy pop melodies and hooks for days on end. He was so prolific at it that we almost got lazy to his genius and took it for granted to the fact he could turn out such classic hits in a heartbeat. 
as the man himself would later go on to say in Daddy Pop, I've got grooves and grooves up on the shelf. Raspberry Beret encapsulates everything about the Around the World in a Day album in three and a half minutes of pure pop brilliance. With the video for the track itself bringing the album's cover to life with charming style and imagery, psychedelic, whimsical and catchy as hell, Raspberry Beret is the ultimate earworm. One of my favourite Prince songwriting styles is his storytelling and Raspberry Beret is classic. Prince paints a picture of himself as an apparently lazy part-time worker in a five-and-dime store who falls for and loses his virginity to a well-built woman wearing a raspberry beret, who also happened to come in through the outdoor, naturally. I really can't think of anyone else who could write about this subject matter in such a joyfully whimsical and kaleidoscopic way, but still managing to keep some of that bravado and self-confidence in himself that we had come to know from his previous albums. They say the first time ain't the greatest, but I tell you, if I had the chance to do it all again, I wouldn't change a stroke, cause baby I'm the most, with a girl as fine as she was them. Prince uses imagery in this track that was also seen in the Purple Rain movie, with himself and his love interest making love in a barn. And in the lyrics, Prince uses some wonderfully descriptive writing to set the scene. Rain sounds so cool when it hits the barn roof, and the horses wonder who you are. Thunder drowns out what the lightning sees, and you feel like a movie star. Just superb, isn't it? The music is wonderful with a mix of psychedelic and pop styles, featuring violins and cellos played by Novi Novog, David Coleman and Susie Katayama, with Prince on all the other instruments. Wendy and Lisa provide backing vocals along with Susanna Melvoin. Raspberry Beret is pure joy from start to finish. A perfect example of how to create pop perfection with an infectious melody and wonderfully descriptive and fun lyrics. It's one of the cornerstones of this album and remains to this day one of the greatest pop songs ever written and recorded. Close my eyes, what's it like? What's it like inside the tambourine? Almost every Prince album has an oddity that whilst fitting in with the general theme of the album is close to straying into a weird and wonderful place. One only has to think of Annie Christian or Arrogance. On this album, Tambourine can make a strong claim to be the interesting oddity, a bursting collection of pent-up sexual frustration that will culminate with the final song of this album, Temptation. Like a lot of Prince's most avant purple tracks, it runs pretty short, just under three minutes, but it packs a big punch. As Prince said of himself, I might be little, but so is dynamite. The pacey drums, the vocals, all the instrumentation. Well, it's Prince, a purely Prince production, which hurtles into view with Prince's restless sexual angst and metaphor-laden exploration of him all alone, playing his, um, tambourine? <laughs> Long days, lonely nights, repeats the refrain of Prince's irrepressible yearning and very Prince-esque lyrics with... I don't care for one night stands with trolley cars that juggle 17. I just want to settle down and play around my baby's tambourine. Prince actually didn't perform the track live until 2002, which is surprising. By the fiery ending, the track is screaming, pleading and self-mocking. Note the poor, aww, in the background vocals. It's brilliant. It's self-aware and yet gloriously self-indulgent. Mostly, it's just a little ball of fun. One of those tracks that only Prince could have had a unique mind to create. Wonderful stuff. America is a straight up funk rock track that was released as the fourth and final single from the album. The song is mainly an attack on life in the United States at the time and the ever present fear of nuclear war, something that weighed heavily on Prince's mind and in his songs during the early half of the 1980s. The track starts as if it's being played by a DJ in a club with the vinyl being stopped several times before finally being released to play. It's a really unusual way to start a funk come protest come social commentary track, but it works so well and is extremely cool. And once the music is released to play, we are hit with a driving beat coupled with guitar lead line before Prince sets out his stall with the opening vocals cry for peace. 
The music is incredibly funky and is the type of track the revolution could jam on for days. Indeed, although the track fades out at 3 minutes 40, on the album the full length version was so long that they ran out of tape recording it. That version was released as the 12 inch version with the track fading out just under 22 minutes, the part where the tape ran out. Musically it's a pretty underrated funk offering and one that tends to be forgotten about. Even by myself listening to it again a few times for this review, I'd forgotten how good it actually is and have definitely gained a new appreciation of it. Lyrically, as I mentioned earlier, Prince is making a statement about life in America at that time. Aristocrats on a mountain climb, making money, losing time. Communism is just a word, but if the government turnover be the only word that's heard. Little sister making minimum wage, living in a one-room jungle, monkey cage. Can't get over, she's almost dead. She may not be in the black, but she's happy she's not in the red. Again, Prince shows huge maturity in his writing and subject matters for someone who was in their mid-twenties at the time, and it is a good example of how socially conscious Prince was in his writing throughout his career, from the beginning right through to his last album. One other thing to note about America is the incredible live performance video. Shot in Nice, France on a day off from filming the Under the Cherry Moon movie, Prince put on a special performance just for this video giving away 2,000 free tickets which was announced on local radio. The whole event was broadcast on MTV, with Prince also giving his first TV interview since 1980, surrounded by some of his fans. This performance leaves you breathless, as Prince and the Revolution tear up the groove. Look out for Wendy playing Prince's Mad Cat guitar, Prince giving away copies of the single to the crowd, some blistering guitar solos, and to top it all off, Prince has a moment on the drums too just fantastic. If ever there was a video to showcase Prince's incredible talent and live performance then this is it. Absolutely truly remarkable. America, a fantastic funky protest song that leaves you into a pop life. There is something that Prince does a lot on a lot of powerful tracks where it almost confuses the mind by having a light, poppy, jaunty, upbeat musical track and overlay it with deep, often dark, disturbing lyrics. And Pop Life is such a great example of that. It's almost like there are two competing narratives with the song, musically and lyrically, and yet it works. Oh boy, does it work. What's the matter with your life? Prince opens and asks if the mailman is jerking you round, putting your million dollar check in someone else's box. Prince, at this time, was top of the pop world and it feels like he's trying to make sense of it all here. Pop life, everybody needs a thrill. We all got a space to fill. Everybody can't be on top. But life, it ain't real funky, unless it's got that pop. In a foretaste to later songs such as Son of the Times, Prince laments, what are you putting in your nose? Is that where all your money goes? The rhythm of addiction flows. You think it's hot, but there won't be no water when the fire blows. Prince also included a fight scene audio clip which people have often mistakenly thought was the infamous Rolling Stones concert where Prince received a pretty hostile reception, but it actually comes from a 1964 sound effects album by Jack Holzman. It might, however, be a subtle reference to that crazy time. In typical Prince fashion, basic tracking for this track finished at just after 6 in the morning. However, the song, musically, has such a bouncing stride with some amazing instrumentation often subtly mixed in. Prince's voice has an effect on it which gives it a slightly removed, echoey feel and adds to the disembodiment of the themes he is discussing. The backing vocals by Lisa and Wendy are as beautiful as always. The striding, rubbery bass is a joy. It's also worth mentioning the Pop Life Fresh Dance remix, remixed by Sheila E, which is definitely worth your time, as of course is Prince's own extended version of Pop Life on his 12 inch. Once upon a time, in a land of sin plenty, there lived a king who didn't deserve to be. He knew not where he came from, nor where he was going. He never once said thank you, never please. Now this king, he had a subject, named Electra, who loved him with a passion uncontested. For him each day she had a smile, but it didn't matter. The king was looking for the ladder. 
Wow, what an opening to this track that is. The Ladder was written by Prince with his father, John L. Nelson, and is a song about finding something bigger in life, a higher consciousness, be it spiritual enlightenment or inner peace. It's open to interpretation to the listener. It's up to you what you want your ladder to be. The track begins with a string section written and conducted by Wendy and Lisa, which can also be heard on Our Destiny Roadhouse Garden, which was eventually released on the Purple Rain Deluxe in 2017. The Ladder is a beautifully uplifting track with a truly rich sound in its instrumentation. It's a full band effort too, which also features Tarja Savell on backing vocals, along with Wendy, Lisa and Susanna Melvoin, Eddie M on saxophone, and a string section featuring Susie Katiyama and David Coleman on cello. As those strings begin to open the track, you could be forgiven for thinking you've strayed into some sort of extra end from Purple Rain as it's so reminiscent of the ending of that album. But with a twang of a string, that illusion is instantly smashed as Prince begins his opening monologue. Lyrically, there are only two verses here, the aforementioned introduction, and then this. A feeling of self-worth will caress you. The size of the whole wide world will decrease. Love of God's creation will undress you. Time spent alone, my friend, will cease. The message here is clear. Nobody has to be alone or suffer from loneliness. Nobody has to struggle on their own. You only have to look deep within yourself. And if you truly open your heart, you'll find all the love, peace and belonging you'll ever need. It's a beautifully simple message that in today's overcomplicated, increasingly isolated world, resonates loud and clear. Everybody's looking for the ladder. Everybody wants salvation of the soul. Steps you take are no easy road. The reward is great for those who want to go. The final track on the Around the World in a Day album is also the final track that was recorded for it. This is one of those Prince tracks, the kind that only he could come up with, the kind that could only come from his extraordinary fertile imagination. Prince is the only artist I know to sing about an existential crisis between sex and love and include the line, Oh darling, I can almost taste the wetness between your... This is temptation. This track burst out the gate with a growling guitar set against Prince Whispering before it explodes like a musical happy ending with instrumentation and screams from Prince bombarding the listener in a cacophony of sound in a pent-up musical ejaculation. Prince channels the passions and frustrations of lust through the music and after taking the listener through this temptation of rock jazz fusion through to a conversation with God one is left exhausted and in need of a cigarette. Everybody on this earth has got a vice. And mine, little darling, mine is the opposite of ice. Mine is the running hot water of the daughter of morality. In other words, this little prince thinks a lot about, you see, baby, 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 I'm guilty in the first degree. Temptation working my body with a hot flash of animal lust temptation all my fingers in the pool of splashing musk after laying his raw lust and desires out there prince then has a crisis within himself manifesting with a conversation with god or his inner soul it's down to interpretation like a lot of prince's writing he wrestles with his urges for sex against a proper loving relationship Oh silly man, that's not how it works. You have to want it for the right reasons. I do, you don't, now die. And then we have Prince's incredible screams as he just lets it all out there. No, no, let me go, let me go. I'm sorry, I'll be good. I promise, love is more important than sex. Now I understand. This whole section lasts almost three minutes of the track and is filled with incredible piano flourishes and runs and Prince yearning for a lover and letting screams out and 
After the conversation and he's told he's going to die, he makes noises and shiver sounds and the piano lets off notes that hit hard and the whole thing is just incredibly otherworldly. It's like nothing you've ever heard as Prince leaves it all out there. Temptation was recorded during the Purple Rain tour and Prince added some of this conversation section into the show. And the track itself coming in at just over 8 minutes is a truly unique ending and a truly unique track in the Prince catalogue. It's hot, sweaty and full of passion but by the time it's finished you feel cleansed and ready for the next chapter, whatever that would be. It really is a great ending to a truly unique album and it's been great to be able to go back through it and review the album. But for now, I have to go. I don't know when I'll return. Goodbye. There are certain pivotal points in Prince's career when he made it abundantly clear that he was a true artist and he was going to follow his creative muse rather than the commercial imperative. Dirty Mind was one, Rainbow Children was another, and arguably Around the World in a Day is one of the biggest. People were expecting Purple Rain too, but in typical Prince style, instead of giving people what they wanted, he gave them what they needed. A sophisticated blend of striding anthems like America, haunting melancholic ballads such as Condition of the Heart, pop classics such as Raspberry Beret and Pop Life, and profound masterpieces like The Ladder and Paisley Park. There is a huge amount to enjoy in this album. Sadly, amongst the clamour for Purple Rain box sets and increasing calls for parade super deluxes, Around the World in the Day sometimes gets overlooked and left out of the conversation. And it really shouldn't. It is an absolutely classic album. And it has an absolutely unassailable claim to be as important as any Prince work. And contains a number of time-tested classics that show the breadth and depth of Prince's songwriting ability, musical genius and fun experimentation. I'll leave the final words to Prince himself. Open your heart, open your mind. A train is leaving all day. A wonderful trip through our time and laughter is all you pay. Now dig, loneliness already knows you. There ain't no reason to stay. Come here and take my hand. I'll show you. I think I know a better way. <laughs>